the properties of steel make it a superior material. Tensile strength, resistance to corrosion, only the hardest. Crazy shit, really. Listen to Living Proof Radio. The full experience on our Patreon. Thank you and good night. Well, let's start with the fact that we're actually here talking again because of the difficulties I had dealing with myself on a screen and how hard it is for me to be recorded and talking in front of an audience um, since I'm a pretty private person. Yeah. And uh, first. And second, because of like, you know, um, the typology of podcasts and the world that is connected with, you know, which is uh, part of my life, you know. Mm -hmm. And again, I feel like with art, I've always been very like, almost like academic in my own way, like very serious, you know. And the reason why I did that, be it was because it was the only like way I felt safe with myself. And uh, so... You know, like no, that's interesting. I uh, so we're doing this again because yeah. I, you know, like it becomes like a complex conversation when you you start to dig into. Can we cut the last five seconds? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't. I, I just got stuck as well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it happens. I I, I want to just take it back from. I'll talk a little bit about myself if that's okay with you for a second. Yeah. Um, I had a. I, I, as you know, I was on parole for a long period of time. I felt like everybody in my circle of friends and uh, maybe in the extended graffiti world knew about what was going on with that. So I, I kind of didn't want to speak about things while they were happening. You know, like I had like a, a felony case in 2017, never talked about it, never posted about it. Um, you know, a lot of struggles along the way while being on parole. And then uh, in 2021 or whenever it was, I did like a, a mini doc where I had to I had to just show my face and talk about the whole situation. And a lot of people came in earlier before we started doing the podcast. You said that I seem like I'm comfortable talking about this type of stuff, but I don't, I don't feel like I am actually. No, I, di I didn't mean you're, you feel comfortable talking about it, but you let it transpire way more. Yeah. I'm yeah, way yeah. more on guard right. about my private life. Yes. And it's not necessarily private life. It's just like, parts my surroundings the way i grew up who i am you know aside from my work you mm -hmm. know um while now i'm reali realizing that a lot of people wonder or like you know like question you know, like who i am or you know and like yeah i think for the first time i'm happy to like let some through you know and you know like and just like let people see who I am a little bit more, although that this scares me, you know. Like, was this something, because I asked you to do this interview uh, maybe a couple of months ago, um, and my interest in doing it with you is just based on our closeness and the conversations that we've had and all of the stuff that I feel like you have as an asset to share with other people, other artists or uh, people who have moved to different countries, uh, people who have dealt with the idea of, maintaining some type of secrecy and then coming out with uh talking about things that are personal or whatnot um there's not necessarily like a question here more or less i think you and i though relate on in a lot of ways we're the same age um we both have graffiti in our past uh we're both interested in art and i think we also both grew up without like a a big financial support you yeah know? yeah yeah I mean, totally. And like, I wonder how, how much of that do you think um, affects how open you are to sharing your story in, in something like this, like a podcast format? Well, podcast or not, it's always been like a question for me, you know, like, should I share, should I not? What should I share? What should I not? You know what I mean? And... I guess the reason why is because like I have like a complex or like I'm afraid of, you know, like just like of like being judged in the wrong way from the wrong people. And it's because 
it's a difficult world, the art world, and often times, you know, like um, it was more part of the past, but people were very like strict about the career of an artist, you know, as like a like a classical, you know, like a painter or a sculptor, you mm -hmm. know, or like a multimedia artist. Um, the vision of that was so specific, or like you know, like like people were supposed to be very dedicated to that only, mm -hmm. almost. Um, while now we have like a way more like a you know like broad, a broad like you know like a spectrum of opportunities within collaboration and you know like it's it's not that we have them now or we didn't. It's just like it's more way more like accepted. You know, I guess we got to a point where we with social medias and galleries where like this becomes like, you know, like more part of the job. And I'm very happy because you can include all of those uh, different aspects of your job. Uh, like doing, doing a commercial job for me is fun, you know, because it's like, it takes me away from st strictly like just working on my heart. And mm -hmm. like, sometimes, you know, you collaborate with other people on projects, you know, like to me that makes it like a, like a wider like perspective and, you know, like a more fun, you know, like, routine and a more fun job you know like so i don't see anything wrong with that you know and um getting back to what we were saying i was just like coming from not much you know like and knowing how difficult the art world is i've always tried it to like just be aware of that and be the most like academic as i could and I come from Italy, I grew up in Milan, I came to the United States when I was like 21, uh, which was like 2008. Um, I just wanted to work on art. Um, Italy seemed like a hard place to like, you know, like, uh, you know, work. There was not much like art related jobs or artists in general, working artists in general at the time and now. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I just embraced it and came to the States with my dog and moved to San Francisco because I felt like New York was like kind of almost like too close to like my world. Like I stopped by New York. I lived in a punk house in Bedside for like a couple of months. And then I went to San Francisco mm -hmm. where I just end up staying uh, for like over seven years. And uh, wait, you stayed in the punk house in New York for seven years? Before? No, 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 in San Francisco. Okay, in San like Francisco. I, after a couple of months, I left and then I stayed in San Francisco for like a long time where I met most of the people that I'm the closest with today. Um, SF's where you linked up with Barry when you started working for him, right? I worked, uh, yeah, for Barry when I was in San Francisco, and uh, that was a great opportunity for me to get on my feet and uh. At the time, I mean, it was a difficult time because I you know, came with not much from there, from Italy. And uh, so, you know, like my, I couldn't speak actually any English, like any. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, so I was going, trying to like learn that and uh, find a job. But also I didn't have paperwork to work, you know, like so. Um, was yeah. graffiti the thing that connected you with him? Um yeah, I mean, no, friends, partially, not st strictly graffiti. I just like, I think we, we share a graffiti crew from Italy and we have some friends in commune. But to be honest with you, we had friends in commune in San Francisco and we ended up crossing paths a couple of times um, then. And I had my first little show and I think he came to it and then I was leaving town and... I really didn't even know where to put my stuff. I was like, I must have been so annoying to him because like after years, I realized how many people like asking for things like that, you know? Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh, can you store these four pieces of mine? And mm -hmm. they end up being in the studio and grabbing them back when I came back to town, start like surfing. I really wanted to surf and he was kind enough to like, you know, come pick me up. And then we started working together and yeah. And I was very passionate about the job because I felt so grateful for it. And with him, like I traveled the world and I've learned so much and it kind of like 
helped me open my vision and my view towards the art world and um, and my creative side, which I felt it was pretty like um, locked, like mm-hmm. many, like repressed in a way, like many other parts of me when I left my country. Um, that slowly within me living in San Francisco, like, and spending time with like my new family at that time um like really helped me like like you know like just chill out open my mind and you know realize what you know how old were you at that time well when i first moved i was 21 i was very young and uh but i grew there a little bit i think i left that i was probably around 30 you know and um no a little less but i went to los angeles not i didn't like come straight away straight up to new york um yeah i mean surfing itself i'm still a shitty enough surfer (laughs) i can you know ride a board but i'm definitely not like somebody you want to look up to but Mm -hmm. uh it changed my life as well you know that routine you know like just just going to the the beach you know like and just starting your day like that and uh um I started to like, you know, like build up my body, appreciate myself, like, you know, like just like, you know, like started taking care of myself, let's say, you know, Mm -hmm. and uh, when I landed there, I lost interest for like, like a lot of like party aspect that I had in Milan, you know, and a scene and this and that. I was just very concentrated in my art and like on surfing and seeing friends, you know, like, and just be with my crew basically, Mm -hmm. which uh, was pretty magic, magic, you know. Um, San Francisco is very far, I guess, from Europe. I mean, I don't guess, it is very far. It's like a nine hour different time zone. So, you know, you're a very, you're like in a different dimension almost, you know, like it's almost like I had to like just turn page you know, with my old life because you never told to people in the same, you know, like state of mind is either morning for you and night for them. They're either like dancing yeah. out drunk when you wake up or, you know, they're like just waking up and you are going to sleep. You know, and, you Was know. that, was that something that you intended to do when you moved or? No, I didn't think about it, but that's one of the things that was like, also like, difficult you know because it felt like you know i'm de- saying this because it was not an easy transition some culturally san francisco because uh, italian is a uh, like culturally is, italy is very different so new york in for example is actually a, a very good in between you know okay um, just like how would you how would you describe italy culturally? it's just more direct new york and people is just like like angrier in a way kind of like milan but mm-hmm. uh um real you know and there it's not that they're not in california it's just like culturally they're way more reserved you know and they don't share many of their like more intimate problems you know i grew up like just you know in italy you say everything out loud you yeah know, you comment everything out loud which is one of the hardest thing because you always feel judged there so you have little space for freedom while you grow up you know and if you get stuck with that um, you know, uh, it becomes like hard just to be yourself. And I wanted to be myself. And so in San Francisco, you know, because people is not very judgmental and respect who you are, you know, you feel free, you know, and, uh, my friends are just more, they're individuals, you know, and that's the thing that I like the most about them. And, um, they're real and, you know, like, I don't know, like, it opened my mind again about many things. Uh, within this package, I think my sexuality came to place, you know, because uh, it's something that I have never acknowledged until actually I moved to Los Angeles. And it took me like almost 10 years of my life to just like take that in consideration, you know, and which going backwards, you know, like it took me a lifetime to take in consideration. And, and how old were you when you started taking it into consideration? 
Well, to be very honest with you, I didn't even take it in, into consideration. Like I had like a, like, like I went through like a love, like a love thing, like a lot. Like it was like more of like a point in my life where I was like, whoa, like I'm feeling this way. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I have this, this feeling of love and then, yeah. I mean, do I acknowledge that, you know, like, yes, I'm like old enough to know that I want to be like a happy person. And I felt like that was the last break of my freedom that I wanted to grab from this experience and my new life. And I did it. And, you know, like if I think about it now, going backwards, that was something that probably I had stuck with me my whole life, you know, mm -hmm. which made things difficult in the past as well and difficult to accept my old country as well uh, because it is a very difficult country actually to be who you want to be especially in my case i wasn't like like that was something that was never questioned about me you know what i mean like you know i mean when i was in milan i lived for seven years with my girlfriend you know and like you know like i like i always had a relationship with women and blah 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 but also like I feel like today in 2024 doesn't matter. You know, you can like, you know, like date, I mean, in New York, because I'm mm -hmm. living here, like, but, you know, like, it's almost like people will still ask you, you know, like, if you like men and women, if you are dating a woman or a man, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because it's a possibility and it's something we got to with history, at least in New York. Mm -hmm. I can only talk for my experience, you know, or like the rest, you know, like California probably yeah. is very liberal, but, um, no, it's something that people have uh, asked me, not a ton, I'm not trying to out anybody or whatever, but in regards to you, people have asked me if you identify as gay or if you identify as bisexual. And it's funny because I feel like we're very close. We're close friends, but I was like, I don't actually know. I never asked. As long as I've known you, you've had a boyfriend, but I, I never, I, I guess I didn't care to ask that question, but maybe that's one that we could run through it is it something that you think about in terms of like how yeah, i am bisexual enough for sure yeah but um i don't know it's it's such a weird like thing i i actually like i'm i question myself all the time but i do i need to question myself i i don't even want to question myself i don't right. know what i am you know i am i'm definitely not somebody that will never have sex with a woman you know what i mean like I did that and I will maybe do it again. You know what I mean? So I think that means being bisexual enough. Tyler's right here. <laughs> it's fine. He needs to know. <laughs> but um, yeah. How, how is it, uh, it? Because if this is something that you said you were 31 or in your early 30s when you were in L.A. and you had this first experience. Uh I was, I don't remember how old. At that point, though, you were already an established artist. You had been, you had an established art practice. This was something that, you know, was happening. I, I was in LA working on like a specific set of works and I moved there to do that. And uh, established, I don't know if I was, I was like on my trampoline to like, you know, like just trying trying to like deal with this world like yeah guess. and I the think art world i guess but the reason that i ask is because i wonder if it if this uh event in your life was something that manifested in some way in the work or if it was something that's just separate oh uh, no in, in ways it, it affected my work a lot i mean i we can just jump into like the way I work, but uh, the way I work is mostly like into like phases, mm -hmm. you know, like, so I'll go, I like to switch and move around materials and be a multimedia artist. And so I went through phases working with phases with working with different materials. Right. And uh, until then my work was pretty structural and heavy and I was working a lot with graphite at the time. And when I was in LA, like I had an entire room dedicated to a specific piece that was a drapery piece composed of eight 60 by 40 inches hand-drawn graphite drapery. Mm -hmm. And it was so dark and intense, you know what I mean? To me, that, that piece is called gray area and that specific piece was about 
like secrecy, privacy, and see through, you know, what people can see about you or not, you know, like it was like almost like a black box, you know, mm -hmm. like, and it was made. And at that moment, thanks to my friend Paolo, I had a beautiful place to uh, call my studio and I had an entire room, a bl a, this black room that was dedicated just to that piece. Um, this to say that yes, he was influenced. After that, slowly, like my shapes became more sexual and organic, not in an explicit way, you know what I mean? So I feel like a lot of people see like not sexual, but like human aspects, you know, like mm -hmm. in my graphite work at that of that time, you know what I mean? and developed into something, you know, that my shapes started to change instead of being more architectural, started to become more um, organic and human. You know what I mean? I felt like almost I was blooming into being a human being, you know, like from being a rock mm -hmm. almost, you know, and that whole process took me a long time. Um, yeah. So definitely had influence. I'm painting colorfully right now, you know. Yeah. I think I'm at the peak right. of my being myself within my persona, you know, and my knowledge within art and open, like you know, like mind openness and uh, sexuality and more to come. You know, I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, that was another question I was going to ask. So what? It's not like you build it in in a super intentional and literal way. Maybe like the way that like uh, Georgia O'Keeffe or like uh, an art trial Gorky, like this is this is like a representation of sexuality. It's just something that you're living out this experience. And then it was pretty natural. I don't even know. I'm looking up because like that piece to me already feel like kind of like sexual, but it wasn't really like thought that way. I, yeah. I think I did wish there was more of that aspect, but. I'm not that representational as an artist, you know what I mean? I guess I'm more abstract even in my shape. And so like, yeah, it wasn't that. I think that's my just natural way to express who I am. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a lot to me into my work. So I think you can tell things left yeah. and right, you know, and uh, I started making work specifically like that was more like architectural and like hard edged and like, brutalist you know what i mean i guess there is one of the reasons is where i come from again you know where there is a like a more rigid rigid structure mm -hmm. and half of my city was built in during the fascist time so it's there is a lot of brutalism architecture brutalist architecture and although it remembers of a awful era I do love and passion, passion for that type of architecture, I guess, because it's where I grew up, you know? Yeah. So I, I find beauty to that, you know? And a lot of those buildings and structures were built in marble. And so when I started drawing those shapes, sometimes that I make, are, they were like envisioned as metal cuts or like rock carved. I love public sculptures. That's something in my life that I want to work more on, but mm -hmm. it's weirdly so separated from the art world. It's like, you kind of have to be a nerd applying just for like public sculptures if you want to do that. Mm -hmm. In fact, there is a lot of shitty public sculptures in the world because for a sure. lot of people like that get that are good at applying, yeah. not at making art, you know? Uh, so. Very good point, very good point. And also I feel like usually there's boards of uh, folks who, who decide upon what type of art and you have to appeal to the masses anytime that you have to appeal to the masses. And it's not so much like an exorcism of what's going on internally, uh, then you get lower quality art. I feel like, you know, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I don't like to work specifically like conceptually on a single piece. I like to have a more, a, broad vision you know mm -hmm. and like or like give more not have myself you know like give more of a broad vision of like you know like a line of idea you know and like like feeling or like condition you know like 
something that you can analyze yourself. I like you to be able to in- interpret what I do also in your own way. I like the work to speak for itself and giving you the vision you want to see. Mm-hmm. Um, if I have to write about like, like an entire body of work that I made, maybe I can do that. But it's about the feeling I'm having during those years and time that took me to make that work, you know. It's more like a conversation about what energies in life and like, you know, like what energies went into that, what emotions went into that, you know, like how uh, I was dealing and coping with problems and, you know, daily life, you know. Um, That's it. (laughs) Um, for me, my experience when I was younger, I guess I was so unfamiliar with other forms of art. I was introduced to, to graffiti naturally. I just, it just happened. Like I was under a bridge one day and found, you know, a spray paint can. Um, and then it developed to a point where I consciously decided, okay, I'm going to make art. Um, there was a, there was a moment that I remember that happening, but I, now retrospectively i feel like i've always been an artist uh even before i was conscious of it in the way that i engage with people in my conversations and the way that i choose to dress and the way that i have preferences about furniture or design or everything and this is something that i've noticed with you where everything you do has a has a francesco touch on it basically yeah i guess i do like changes but there is a like a line that follows somehow you know like my shapes are kind of like repetitive patterns you know Mm -hmm. but then you know like they can be dimensional painted drawn you know like they can be made in many different ways photographed photographed and developed so you know i think either the most simple shape that i drew that is one of the most like iconic that i use all the time change all the time you know if mm-hmm. you see the artworks they're always like you know different that is not like a logo you know what i mean it's just like do you think that that's a good way to perhaps find a style or a voice for an artist is to always be trying different things and then seeing what I think, arrives i think everybody has a different either opinion view or way to work where it's just too personal you know what mm-hmm. i mean so everybody has a different approach to that I did listen once to a very quick interview that a contemporary artist named Calvin Marcus did. And like, I think he said like a sentence that was one of my favorite of the past years where he expresses his urge to like, you know, like changes. And like, you know, like if you see his work, um, like, you know, there are different body of works that look at times completely different. Yeah. You know? um, I love that. Me too. I do like his work as well. And I, uh, it's refreshing to hear that, you know, but oftentimes people either think they have to follow more of one route. R- r- route. Route, sorry. Uh, or... Like for different reasons, sometimes they do want to do that. Sometimes they're afraid to change, you know, sometimes having a, you know, like, um, like just one, like one, um, how you say, like, like a trope or like a motif that you, like that you keep using or one technique that mm-hmm. you're using, you know, or like one typology of work that you're only doing, you know, mm-hmm. uh, give you more security, you know, like people will like some, some people think, you know, that will that will you will benefit by looking more like a brand almost you know yeah I mean? so it like and it works for many people and there are so many different like facades of art you know that interact with different worlds there is like a very like insti- like more institutional world a more commercial world mm-hmm. you know and and blah 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 and so um i think uh i do really like to just branch out but you work in series though so you'll branch out but i try it's it's not necessary and i try but i gotta say something like often in the past i realized when like somebody come and studio visit me 
like how overwhelmed they were because mm -hmm. I'm like fuck like if I walk them through the beginning to the end of my yeah like art making and studio like if I go at the lower floor like there is so many like of my studio there are so many like there's a photograph that I worked on with bleach on photo paper and uh, is a is a diptych that is attached to a ballpoint pen mm -hmm. very anally graphic drawn piece then I made like you know like sculptures with resin heads and like like colorful paintings graphite uh, more organic graphite more like you know like sculptural looking graphite pieces uh, uh, very loose head drawings you know like they, it's like all part of my career so I feel like I love that aspect, but sometimes can be overwhelming for people. And especially if a gallerist want to invest in you uh, and come to your studio needs to be convinced that that's like a vision that they have, you know? So mm -hmm. it's hard, I think, for people sometimes to see, have a broader view about what I can put together. Mm -hmm. I feel like my uh, golden card is when I have shows because in that moment, which is my favorite, by the way, because I love to install my work specifically. So I think in those moments, those are the moments where I can show the world or my friends or people how um, I will display my world, you mm -hmm. know, which can be like confusing, you know, you can be like, what the fuck, you know what I mean? But then when you see it in a space, it makes sense, you know what I mean? And then spaces can be of any kind, you know what I mean? Like you can have like different rooms and stuff and, you know, like section that, you know, have a sculptural room and then have like paintings on the other room, you know, like there are so many ways. And uh, I just am very passionate about that part because I feel like is is like tied in everything together. It makes the magic almost, you know. Definitely. Do you do you feel like uh, you would be able to make a lot of work for spaces that you don't know what they're what they look like yet, or do you kind of normally if you make work for a space, yeah, you know already how it looks. Sometimes you make a model, you know, maybe foam mm -hmm. core, uh, but uh, like. If you don't have a show plan, you're always going to make art, you know what I mean? So you're just going to work on, you know, like, you know, a body of work that you like. Right. And then at times when the show comes and you are on another, like, you know, like type of work, like you're working on something else, that doesn't mean necessarily that the body of work you made is there that the right one for the show you're about to have, you know, everything has their own place and space, I think, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Uh, I've had a tough time over the years of balancing the amount of work that I do at jobs and the amount of, you know, painting that I actually get done in the studio. Um, the whole time I've known you, you've operated as, as an artist predominantly, and then occasionally you'll have like gigs and work that you do. But I know that you've had long periods of time where you've worked a lot for other people, for other artists or in jobs. Yeah. I mean, I've been here like 16 years, you know, yeah. there were, there are better years and worse years with art. And, uh, now it's been a few years that I'm more on my own. Although sometimes I do like to, like, sometimes I wish I can work for somebody, even if I'm doing well, yeah. because it's fun to interact with an, another artist, of course, not five days a week, you know, but like, I will like give it a one day a week sure. to be dedicated to somebody else's cause. Mm hmm Actually, I will do that. <laughs> or well, even if he's not an artist, like another cut, but like within the artist assisting job, you know, like mm -hmm. there's so many aspects that I love, you know, you get so much information, there is so much exchange of opinions, you know. So yes, anyhow, just to say that, although it's a few years that I'm like more on my own, I did work my ass off with so many artists during this year, like for probably 10 years, you know, like I worked with... Uh, probably six, seven different artists, you know, mm -hmm. and a lot of them, you know, with, with some of them more intensely and some of them less, you know, like, like within time and, you know, like space <laughs> and dedication of your life for them, you know. Do um, you feel like you work harder when, when you're not working for other artists or doing any other type of work outside of the studio? 
or do you feel like you're like are you able to take rest when you're working just as an artist on your own stuff yeah yeah you shape your own life but then you have no rules you know like so sometimes you get you know like sucked in your world or if you're on, on a deadline you know what i mean and then you start working and maybe you work for like until you look like you're a lunatic and yeah like, but um but when you work for somebody else you're just straight up producing way more you know i feel like there is less questioning you know like there's so much questioning about your own work and mm -hmm. so much at stake and then you know like a coffee and this and that in between with friends and like people come through and then do sport and that and but when you're working for somebody you're just dedicated to that and it's very impressive to see impressive to see how much you actually can get done mm -hmm. like so like specifically like we didn't have time schedule you know uh I mean, I don't love time schedules, you know, but like when I worked for Barry, my time schedule was very open. Like even once again, it was like the best that way, you know what I mean? Because I like, like I put up my hours in my little book and like, um, you know, he will leave me freedom. He wanted me to work with him for a period of time, but not forever because he wanted my career to grow. Mm -hmm. And he gave me all the understanding and openness regarding my time that I needed for my work, you know. And that's another beautiful thing, I think. But not all the artists are the same. Some people are more structural and they're like just seeing it more as a day job and blah, blah, blah. So everybody is different. I worked for Tom Sachs for a couple of years where like, the work was more structured, you know, and mm -hmm. we were doing a lot of like, I mean, I learned so much there too, because, you know, like I was in um, woodshop making, using materials and that I've never used and um, archit, I say like, um, like, like drawing up like pieces, taking them as tasks, having people helping me. Like I made a safe one time from the thirties made out of like, you know, like very, very thick wood and metal. And like, I use like a, I have to like, you know, like use like a, like, like real locks, you know, like re make like real, like, like engineering, basically. engineering, you know, like, and you know, it was so thick because safes are so thick that, you know, like the perspective of the door, you know, it took me so long to figure out how to have like this heavy door mm -hmm. with glass inside where you see all the mechanism just closing and stuff and that was like my promotion with him when i was like you know like i want to be more on top of it i want to get more money and he's like all right prove me this you know like just this is your next job it was every job i've done it was very different i helped uh, my friend tauba for a period of time uh, for her last set of works uh that um they had shown this year at Paula Cooper and also I was incredibly uh, um, like thankful for that because they helped me in a moment where again like you know like on and off you know like you go up and down in that moment I need help and mm -hmm. they really helped me and it's amazing you know you see how other people like process their works and you know like how they think and like it's, it's just always inspiring and i guess the artists i work with are big artists and amazing artists you know you know i'm like lucky enough that i had the opportunity to work with like you know those artists and not with like random right boring you know like people you know like because it could be anything you know totally. and yeah i help uh claire rojas with oil painting at the time when I was in San Francisco and then I helped Sarah Kane in Los Angeles at other times. Um, yeah. I mean, Barry and it's, it's like, yeah, it's a great list of people to, to <laughs> be around. I um, mean, yeah, I am again, I'm grateful for that. And it's like, and that's been my school cause I didn't go to college. And so, yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. I have a question for you just about, I think that it's something that you and I have talked about is kind of feeling certain insecurities about things like that coming from where you come from 
and conducting yourself in this world that can often be filled with, you know, pretension, judgment, um, wealthy people abound basically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you have to learn how to traverse, you know, different, I guess, uh, hierarchies or stratas of, of society and everything. And, and in my opinion, you, you do it very well. Do you feel like at this point in life at, at, at the age that we're at now, do you feel more, most comfortable engaging in those worlds? Do you feel like you understand yourself best in that? Or is it like, uh, still like a, a learning? I, I apologize. I don't understand the, which, uh, world specifically that you're talking about. I guess I'm talking about like the fine art world where there are people that are buying, you know, like the gallery world. Do I feel like what? Like, do I feel like comfortable or like, yeah. I mean, it's not comfortable. Not, I mean, what makes you uncomfortable is a single person. Mm. You know, somebody can make you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. you know? So I think it's so specific to that, you know, like, and the art world is a very bitchy world. So you're going to find so many annoying people. Yeah, that's So many what people I mean. that you're like, have to tolerate, you know sure. what I mean? Like, um, like, if I feel like I'm at a right level, yes more than a right level i mean like i worked my whole life mm -hmm. what else can i be than what i am you know right. so i think there is no level at all in general for an artist i think you can just be an artist you know but did they learn the, acad the academic route of like being an artist and like you know like just how to operate in the art world yes i did with the artists i work with Mm -hmm. so that was my school that you don't learn in school you know what i mean yeah, like yeah. when you go to college the problem is like when i was in san francisco there was a moment specifically for a couple of years that i have a lot of friends teaching you know my friend alicia my friend sahar um, so I, I go to classes and like you know like have a talk you know and like slideshow my work talk to students and like because my work is so like um once again, like, like, uh, like ramific, like you say, like, like branched out in materials that is interesting mm -hmm. for students just to see what they could like engage in, you know what I mean? Or what's the difference between one thing to another, you know, mm -hmm. but then I'll go to critics, you know, like at, at colleges, like CCA and stuff. And often case, I felt like more than seeing good work, I'll see students that were very, very, very self-aware of their critiques and talks you know like how they were speaking about it you know like uh but they had no experience whatsoever within the contemporary art world mm -hmm. like in terms of like how operate which is huge you know understanding like how to set up a museum you know like how much stuff goes into a show you know like how far can you go you know how much can you push it how much can you ask you know like they don't teach you those things in school right and you pay 100k a year i'm not trying to talk shit about school but sometimes i go to these critics i'm like fuck you know like you're so aware and you're talking so much but yeah like your work is actually like not good you know and and you have not much experience so that's what college gives you i i I got better now and I'm here talking. So this is maybe my way to like process and learning again mm -hmm. about, you know, like, you know, talk about my work or open. I think like, I think what taught me that is just like actually doing it, you know, like the first talks I had were like horrible probably. Um, but yeah, my school has been my experience, you know, and sometimes school actually do give you like a, like a very strong, like, secure mind about being somebody that can talk about art and i love that but yeah sometimes you miss other points too you know like everybody make their own history you know what i mean so sometimes you pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in school and you just suck <laughs> and some other time you just like you don't need school and you're a great artist i gotta say the past few years was very very specific about like the art world was very on it about like having paperwork you know like just like uh, like just a di diploma you know they will go to see mfas a lot mm -hmm. like at least at a moment i don't even know right now exactly how it is but um for a few years galleries were kind of more on the academic 
route if they had to pick an artist. You know? Sure. They'll go to MFAs and pick somebody that is good that has a blank slate and make him into artists, you know, like, uh, which made it way harder for people that were self-taught. Yeah. Which it still is, I think. A lot of artists, unfortunately, are like, having a way harder time achieving anything because it's not written on a piece of paper, you know. And Do you, like, you I, I'm assuming you've had to write your bio multiple times for different shows yeah or have a bio written about you do you do you i have statements a lot that i write every show differently and i do have some random bio that people like it feels like frankenstein you know sure like, it's like a patchwork you know you start with one and then you go on with ears and you, you know you're just like oh let's take two lines from that sure. and put them into that and then sometimes you like read stuff on the web that are like what the hell <laughs> about yourself it's just like yeah it's it's a tricky thing you know like this you know the more like text-based aspect of it mm -hmm. and it feel also it felt like a lot in the past few years like people were like obsessing over writing you know what i mean and years ago i was in la with another friend of mine sonia um and which she used to write for an art magazine mm -hmm. and uh we were like i can't read anything anymore it's like so much has been is been written you know what i mean and like so many words you know like i think sometimes they are very important and some other times they're actually not you know but we are obsessing a lot about you know like how to squid it up into something that looks more legit or not you know mm -hmm. um so there is a lot of that. Some other times, it like, I like statements better because when I work on a show, if I have to state what the show is about, it comes in place a more truthful aspect of me where I talk naturally about like what my feelings are in that moment, you know, what was I feeling when I was working on my artworks, you know what I mean? And like, you know, for that period of time and, like and give it a magic. It's almost like, you know, like it's like a cherry on top of a cake, you know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. fun for me almost, you know, you like just work around what you know, like. Well, I, I'm just authentically curious if uh, you feel more comfortable communicating in Italian than you do in English. It will just be easier, you know, like yeah. if I have to. Like, does it ever get exhausting for you? Well, sometimes I get tense, like, like in an interview like this, at moments, if we pull out some sort of like, you know, like words or things I'm supposed to talk about, you know, like there is a limitation within my language, you know, um, where if I'm talking to a friend around in the streets, like Americans are so nice about like being fine with my English, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And like, I guess they can understand me, you know, but some other times when you have to be more, again, academic about a word or a sentence, you know, like it gets hard. Like words are so specific, you know? And mm -hmm. I think by now I know good English, but it's like, fuck, sometimes it's like not super easy, you know what I mean? Yeah. On the other way, I think if this interview was in Italian, I will miss... I will stop the same amount of time looking for words because I've forgotten so many or I use the wrong grammar, you know, now. I feel like I can't speak Italian and I can't speak English, to be honest <laughs> with you. I think you do a great job actually speaking about it. I think, I think most people, but, you know, we're, we're our own uh, worst critics. Um, we haven't talked about graffiti really at all. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I always had a hard time talking about graffiti in general because the last thing I want is to be associated with something or like be judged about something. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a difficult aspect uh, for many years for me because again, I was like afraid of like being like, you know, like cut out of one, you know, like one opportunity to another. So, I did keep that aspect very private always in my life. Uh, yeah. Now we are here and uh, I'm not afraid to say uh, that I have grown up doing graffiti and they're part of my life, you know? Yeah. Um, 
that said, they don't really interact with my job as an artist, you know what I mean? But they definitely made me who I am and they made me the person I am today. And there are so many interesting aspects, aspects for me related to that. Sometimes I feel a little bit hunted by it. <laughs> yeah, same. But uh, other times, um, it's, it's just fun, you know what I mean? And like, there is there are aspects related to the letters and calligraphy part of it that once again, I'm just passionate about, you know, like, and something that in the past was more part of my life growing up in Italy. When I was young, I started doing graffiti when I was 13, like very young. Mm -hmm. And I really went hard for a few years. Then I stopped and started again before I left. And like, um, it's like never ending. And um, that's about it. I mean, like, we can talk about, you know, like, whatever you want but oh, I, I want to talk about um preferences of forms of graffiti like i think there's so many different ways to explore it personally well i think you and i agree that a hand style is probably the most important uh thing that you have to master if this is a world that you want to participate in and i think it's kind of bare bones essential people have different opinions right i yeah. like hand style i Me like too. Which doesn't need to be a good hand style. <laughs> I think it needs to be a hand style that I like. You know, I want, sometimes there are hand styles that to me feel so powerful, you know, uh, and instinctive. And I like that aspect of it, you know, mm -hmm. but they are more like straightforward, not necessarily like just like beautiful, you know what I mean? Like, and bombing, you know, be out in the streets. I mean, that aspect is to me is what I'm interested in. I don't care about anything that is more like detailed or like, you know, like colorfully, like, you know, like worked and like, and, uh, but that's just taste. Everybody's different, you know, and I like, you know, like the train all aspect, uh, mm -hmm. subways and trains and like that can, came into place in the past left and right. But, also, there is people that specialize only on that, you know, like, I think what's interesting me more is the rough graphs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, you know, just like hand styles and tags and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't know how, how it is in Italy here in the States, though, or my experience was that when you're younger and you're doing graffiti, it's almost like you... Uh, aspire to be like a, a criminal and like a macho type of criminal was that anything that you experienced when you were younger um yeah i mean growing up but i don't i i was way more attached to the like i was my world was more like a punk graffiti world you know what i mean uh -huh. like so already freer you know not not very much when rap i guess i'm not like that anyways you know what i mean mm -hmm. i feel like like I'm pretty much not a macho, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and like, so, you know, I feel like, I don't know, like also San Francisco graffiti, especially like in the nineties wasn't really like, I, I can't speak for all of it, but part of, part of it was punk, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like my friends were more of part of a punk scene, you know what I mean? And same for me when I was young, uh, younger like I also felt very political for a period of time I was protesting a lot um, and I spent a lot of time in a social center when I was like like a squat social center uh, political in Milan uh, and you know mm, that was just part of it you know until I kind of like became overwhelming uh, and I kind of like chilled out actually how how much how far ahead do you like conceptualize the future? I don't at all. So you're a living in the moment person. Unfortunately, I live a lot in the past, which makes me very sad all the time. <laughs> Not sad, but like melancholic and like sure, you know, like, like I always have memories and I wishes about what is past, and then I maybe plan the near future. I have a hard time planning, like long ahead actually interesting yeah but i do have hopes <laughs> yeah yeah same same uh, a lot of hopes and i definitely think that i overthink the past 
What is there a specific time in the uh, in the past that you focus on, or is it just no, random no? It's just like just... every second you leave becomes a memory, you know, and that memory becomes it kind of like often clears out all the like negative aspects and like you just kind of your memories are always like oh i had so much fun doing that you know and you kind of eliminate all the like yeah the, the, the bad parts of it you know yeah sometimes i'll forget about the good parts i'll just focus on the the, the bad you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. for a long time i'll look at it and just be like this is a terrible year um and it might i might have had some great times within the year but just in general i'll be like yeah that was a terrible time 